Hello, my name is Professor David Halpin. I'd like to present the results of this Teotropium pool safety analysis on behalf of my co-authors. Teotropium is the most widely prescribed drug for COPD worldwide. It's available in two formulations, the Handy Halo, which has been available for clinical use for over 10 years, and the Respimat, which was introduced in 2007. Supporting the clinical use of the drug, we have extensive clinical trial data, which has shown the efficacy but this data also gives us important information about the safety of the drug in both formulations. The purpose of this analysis was to build on previous studies which have looked at the occurrence of adverse events, serious adverse events and fatal adverse events in all the placebo-controlled trials with teotropium both in the handy Haler formulation and in the Respimat. In total, there are 28 trials that have examined teotropium in the handy Haler formulation and seven in the Respimat. All these studies have had similar inclusion and exclusion criteria, which allows the pooling of the analysis in the way that we've done in this study. As time has gone by, the inclusion criteria for the studies have also become slightly broader and have allowed the inclusion of patients with cardiac disease, unstable disease, and also the use of concomitant medication. In order to examine the safety of teotropium, We've looked at the occurrence of adverse events, serious adverse events, so that's events that lead to hospitalisation, are life-threatening or indeed fatal, and separately, fatal adverse events. For these, the incidence rates, the rate ratios, and the 95% confidence intervals for both the handy Haler and the Respimat trials were calculated, and these were calculated both for the drug together, all pooled, or individually for the devices. To give you an overview of the results, we looked at the occurrence of adverse events and serious adverse events and found that these were numerically and statistically significantly lower in patients treated with teotropium compared to placebo. We also looked at the occurrence of fatal adverse events in patients treated with teotropium or on placebo and there was no statistical difference between the mortality rates in the two groups of patients. As you would expect, the major causes of mortality in patients in these studies were respiratory, cardiac and vascular. We found that there was a statistically significantly lower rate of mortality from respiratory and vascular events in patients treated with teotropium and there was a numerically reduced number of cardiac deaths but this was not statistically significant. As well as the standard adverse and serious adverse events, we also looked at the occurrence of major adverse cardiovascular events, MACE. This includes fatal and non-fatal MI and fatal and non-fatal vascular events. We found that there was a numerical reduction in the occurrence of these events in patients treated with teotropium, both for fatal MACE and non-fatal MACE compared to placebo, but this was not statistically significant. As you would expect from a potent anticholinergic, the study did reveal that patients on teotropium had a higher incidence of anticholinergic gastrointestinal side effects, particularly dry mouth and constipation. So in summary, this study has shown that the use of teotropium in either the handy Haler or the Respimat formulations is associated with statistically significantly fewer adverse events and serious adverse events and that there's no difference in the occurrence of fatal events or cardiovascular events. The recent Tearspear study with large numbers of patients has shown that there's no difference in the mortality when teotropium is used in either the handy Haler or the Respimat formulation, and that confirms the finding in this study that there is no increased risk of mortality. Overall, this data is reassuring, and combined with the extensive data we have on the efficacy of teotropium, is important for clinicians.